Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a massive Sephora haul. Okay, it's not massive, but I spent so much money at Sephora. You would really think that I bought like 20 items, but I didn't. But there is a lot of stuff in here, okay? There's a lot of stuff in here. I actually bought half of this in store, but I think it's important to do this every once in a while just to show you guys that even though I get sent a ton of makeup in PR, I am constantly buying makeup at Ulta, Sephora. I'm constantly buying stuff to add to my collection just so that I'm not only getting brands that I get in PR. Like there's a brand that I just saw at Sephora that I had never seen before, so I picked up a blush. I'm super interested in their SPF like skin tint. I'm so mad I didn't buy it, but I had already spent so much money. But I love discovering new brands at Sephora and Ulta and just like spending my own money on makeup. Because even though that absolutely does not sway my opinion at all, I'll get something in PR and if I hate it, I'm gonna tell you about it even if it was sent to me for free. I still want a balance, you know? We gotta have a balance here on my channel. So, let's talk about all the stuff I bought. Starting with this jacket that I got at Zara the other day. I know this, I didn't get this at Sephora, but I'm obsessed with this. It's like my new favorite jacket. I love it, I love it so much. Okay. I had to get another setting spray. I completely ran out of mine already, which is saying a lot because I have a lot of setting sprays in my collection, but this is hands down my favorite setting spray of all time. This is the Cali Ray Surf Proof Setting Spray. It keeps my makeup on for literally like 15 hours. It is the best, most wonderful setting spray. It doesn't dry me out at all and has an incredible fine mist, which for me is just as important as the formula because nobody wants like big fat water droplets when they're setting their face. So yeah, this is my second bottle and I love it so much. I will always repurchase. I honestly originally went into Sephora for a brow product. Like I'm not kidding, I was not expecting to film a haul. <laughs> I went in there to get another brow pen that matches my hair color now because the original Glossier brow flick is just too dark. Their original brown is like almost black. It's for very, very, very dark brown hair. And so with my red hair now, I need something a lot warmer and just a little bit lighter. I still really love dark brows. But now with this tone, I want my brows to still be dark, but a lot warmer. So I actually went with two brow pens, which honestly is not ideal. I would just like one freaking brow pen, but here's the problem, here's the problem. The Anastasia brow pen has a ton of different shades, so many different undertones. Honestly, you can't beat the selection over Anastasia when it comes to their brow products. However, however, even though I really do like their brow pen, I prefer the formula of the brow flick from Glossier, but they only have three shades. A pitch black, a brown that's almost black, and then this one in blonde. And actually, this one works really well for my auburn hair because it's pretty warm. Honestly, if you have blonde hair that's a little bit more cool toned, you're gonna hate this. The blonde Glossier Brow Flick is straight up auburn. Like a very, very light auburn. If you have warm hair, you will love this. If you have blonde hair that's warm, you will really love this. So it absolutely works, which was pleasantly surprising for me, but it is a little bit too light for me. As I'm applying it, it's the perfect shade for my auburn hair, honestly, but I love a dark, bold brow. I just always have. So I just needed something a little bit more than this. So I also picked up the Anastasia Brow Pen in the shade chocolate. Now this is a deep brown, but it is a very warm deep brown. The Glossier one is just so cool and dark. This one's perfect for like chocolatey warm hair. On its own, it is too dark for me. Just a slightly too bold for my auburn hair, but when I combine them, I really really do like how my brows look. I have both of them on right now and I love how my brows look. Again, not ideal, kind of frustrating, kind of annoying. And I could easily go pick up like soft brown from Anastasia for example, which is a nice like in-between shade but again, I just love the formula of the brow flick more because it lasts longer on my skin This one fades a little bit faster than this one still really good. Just not as good Anyway, that was really long for no reason. This is what I'm using on my brows now Glossier brow flick and blonde ABH brow pen in chocolate What a mission Okay, I got the baby bottle of this because I have so many foundations. I don't need a new one, but every time Makeup Forever launches a new foundation, I just need it in my life. And I hadn't gotten this one in PR yet, so I wanted to pick it up for myself. I do get PR from Makeup Forever, but they don't always send me all of their things. So I wanted to try their new HD Skin Hydra Glow Undetectable Skin Booster Foundation. And I got mine in the shade 1N14. And like I said, I bought the little baby bottle. They have a mini that you can purchase on Sephora. And I freaking love this. I love this so much. It's the foundation I'm wearing on my skin right now. Honestly, this is the first time I put it on, so I have to wear it throughout the day. I've only had it on my skin for about an hour now, but I love it. It makes my skin look so radiant without feeling sticky or greasy. It doesn't feel like anything on the skin. It is truly undetectable. It doesn't look like I'm wearing any foundation. It's not really settling into my lines all that much, 
and yet it's still a very like bouncy, juicy, hydrating foundation without the shine or that dewiness. It's just like plumping, but natural. It's perfect, I love it. <laughs> At least for my dry skin, I am really, really liking this so far. Of course, I'll wear it throughout the day and I'll get back to you, but so far, so good. I typically love Makeup Forever foundations, so, so happy this is a good one. I was so excited to get my hands on this. This is the new Fenty Beauty We're Even Hydrating Long Wear Concealer. As soon as I heard that name, Hydrating, sign me up. Long wearing, sign me up. And I really like it so far as well. It's the concealer I'm wearing on my face right now. And I really, really love this applicator. Ugh, this applicator, it's so cool. I got mine in the shade 120N, and it's a little bit too bright for me. I did pick up the shade online, so I should have gone like one shade deeper, but I love the applicator on this. At first when I pulled it out, I'm like, that looks like a weird bendy BB, but I swear it just hugs your under eyes so perfectly. It is the perfect shape to get right up in your under eyes. I love it so much. Truly like the best applicator a concealer has ever had. But the formula is also really nice. It has really good coverage without being heavy or drying under the eyes, so that's super nice. I love it, at least so far. Blends really nicely, honestly, no complaints. I did go a little blush crazy. I did, I did. Well, I mean, not crazy, I bought three blushes. But I've been loving, well, you guys know, I love blush. Oh my god, no, I bought four blushes. Because one of them is technically not really a blush. It's like a both, it's like a blush and a lipstick. But yeah, I got, I got four of these babies. So this is the one that intrigued me the most. I don't know how to say this name. Ciel, 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 Ciel. But you can find it at Sephora. Um, and this is their Blush and Protect SPF 50 blush. When I saw that this was a blush that had SPF 50, I, I bought it immediately, right away. And I got mine in the shade Christy. It's the blush I'm wearing on my skin right now. It's so natural. Obviously, it's a really sunny day right now, so you can't see the blush all that well. And plus, I didn't apply too much. But it's the softest, most beautiful, everyday pink that's not too cool, but also not too warm. It just looks, it's beautiful. It's the perfect everyday blush. And I love that it has SPF 50, guys. SPF is so important. It is truly the number one anti-aging ingredient. If you put on SPF every single day of your life, you will slow down the aging process, okay? So any chance I get to throw SPF on my face, I will take it. And I love the applicator. I love that the cap like clicks, so you know it's on, like really sturdy. I love the formula. It's like moussey, but not in a matte way. It has a very, very soft, natural finish, and I like that it's an, a mineral SPF. I don't know. So far, so good. I want all the shades. I want to try them all. And then this was totally influenced by TikTok. Not TikTok shop or anything, but I saw some girl using this like in a viral video and I needed to get my hands on it. The minute she put this on her cheeks, her cheeks came alive. Her cheeks sang and I was like, add to cart immediately. Like I literally ran to Sephora. I ran. So this is the Giorgio Armani Fluid Sheer Glow Enhancer. It's not a liquid blush or anything. It's just a glowy enhancer. You can put it all over your face underneath foundation. You can use it as a highlight, as a blushy highlight, whatever you want. She put this shade on her cheeks and it looked stunning. It comes in a ton of different shades, but she was wearing this one. So I had to get it. This one is in the shade 11. Really exciting name, but look how beautiful. Wow, this is like a full-on blush for real. It's really sheer and glowy, but there's definite color. I'm gonna put this on my face right now. It just looked so dewy and lovely on her cheeks. Let's try it. That is beautiful. Wow, look at the difference. You see that glow? It's so pretty. And a little goes such a long way. Uh, an entire drop is far too much. I definitely wanna try it when I don't have any other blush underneath it because I do think it lifted up some of the blush I had on underneath. Like I can see it looking a little bit splotchy right now. So I wanna use it on its own to make sure because it is a pretty penny, okay? And then these two blushes are from Refai. I love the Refai packaging. They don't have the best reviews on the Sephora website, but a lot of the stuff that I've tried, I really, really like. I wanted to get their Dusk lip gloss so bad, but it was sold out online and I have gone in store first. So when I finished making my purchases online, it was sold out online. I should have gotten it in store, but I really, really like their lip glosses. Anyway, I didn't get any. <laughs> But I got this lip blush in the shade Bloom, and I thought it was so interesting. So this is a lip and cheek blush. I'm actually wearing it on the center of my lips right now with some other lip liner I'm going to talk about in a second, but I just dabbed it on the center of my lips, and it has a really, really nice matte formula. It kind of has like that blurring effect. I feel like on the cheeks, it's really going to give you a gorgeous, like blurred look, a blurring kind of um, creamy matte blush. So I'm very excited about that. I will say my lips are so 
freaking crusty right now that it is emphasizing the dryness of my lips. It is a matte product, so I knew that that was gonna happen, but again, that's just because my lips are really, really crusty right now. <laughs> but I think this would be the most beautiful, like, monochromatic look. This, like, dab in the center of your lips, a little bit on your cheeks, and I think it's just, like, gorgeous for the spring and summer. So I wanted to pick that up, and then I got this cream blush from Refai, and honestly, I bought it because it looked so insane in store. The second I swatched it, I was like, I need that. It is a neon peach blush. Now, I will say, these little refly, but refi blushes are super, super small. I have the one in the shade Rose, and I love it. It's like a baby doll bubblegum pink, and it is so pretty, but this packaging is rather tiny for the price. Like, it is little. It's a little guy. But look at this color. It is neon peach, and it's not even looking as neon as it really is in person on the camera, but oh my gosh, it is so stunning. <gasps> I cannot wait to wear this on my cheeks with this hair. I love it. This is gonna be my spring peach watch. Cannot wait, wish it was, and bigger packaging. Okay, we're almost done. <laughs> Four more products. I keep buying high-end lip liners every time they come out to see if they compare to the Pat McGrath lip liners that you guys know are my favorite, best lip liners to ever exist. They are the lip liners that last the longest on my lips. I will put on a Pat McGrath lip liner at 9 a.m. and I will still see that shit at midnight. Like, perfectly. They're the best. So, Hourglass came out with these Shape and Sculpt lip liners. I got mine in the shade Flaunt 2. I have a million lip liners that look like this. I don't know why I got this shade. <laughs> but I really just wanted to test out the formula. I love that this lip liner comes with a little sharpener. Can never go wrong with a little sharpener. This is the lip liner I'm wearing right now. Really, really creamy, just glides on the lips. I have a feeling it's not going to be as long wearing as my Pat McGrath one, but we shall see. To me, that is what I base all my high-end lip liners on. Does it last as long as Pat McGrath? No, it doesn't. Then not worth it. I'd rather get a lip liner at the drugstore because Essence has great ones, and I don't know, we'll see. I actually had another Pat McGrath lip liner in my cart, and I switched it for this one. I was like, let me try a new formula. I should have bought that Pat McGrath one. I'm missing like three Pat McGrath lip liners, to have the full collection. <laughs> Speaking of Pat McGrath, this next product is actually a disappointment for me. I kind of regret buying it. I don't think I've ever said that for a Pat McGrath product, but this is the Pat McGrath eyeshadow quad in Daring Desire. I think that they launched this for Valentine's Day on the Sephora website, and what's going on here, Pop? What's going on with this one? I don't know if they had to make this palette like for Sephora, so they went a little bit more affordable on packaging and formula. Well, maybe not on packaging because I've gotten a ton of Pat McGrath um, eyeshadow palettes that have this cardboard packaging and the formula is incredible, but the formula on these four eyeshadows fell a little flat for me. This is not Pat McGrath quality. The matte is really good. I'm wearing the matte on my eyes today, just like smudged. Really nice, but this inner corner highlight, my inner corner should be beaming right now. These glitters, they're not up to par with Pat McGrath glitters. Like, Pat McGrath is super, super expensive. That's expensive. But these are the best eyeshadows I have personally ever used. Pat McGrath, Il Maquillage, Natasha Denona, hands down, like, the best formulas. This is really, really good, but it's not on Pat McGrath level. Like, I'm still gonna use this and it, it's still gonna look gorgeous on my lid, but it's not like, wow. <laughs> like so many of her other glitter formulas. For example, I have this quad. This is the Venus quad. And these shimmers, these light shimmers, are some of the best shimmers I've ever used. This color, incredible. This is actually a very similar shade. This brown? Oh, no, not that similar. Why did I buy this? It's almost the exact color. The shimmers in this quad are next level, blow you away, worth every single penny. This? Mm-mm, mm-mm. The quality, it just, it doesn't compare. It doesn't, I'm sorry. It just doesn't, and for that reason, I kind of regret buying it. I would say to stay away from this palette. I personally don't think it's worth the money. I think she has other eyeshadows that kill it. And this just did it. And that's coming from a die-hard fan, okay? Iconic London makes some of the best highlighting products in the world. Whenever I buy something from Iconic London, it's usually always a highlighting product. This is the Lit and Luminous Baked Highlighter. I'm not into highlighters these days, but when I saw this, I had to pick it up because I love all of their highlighting products. So I actually wanna try this on camera for the first time with you guys, just to see how glowy it is. Gonna take my little Linda Halberg 306 brush. Stunning. Oh my gosh. 
This is taking me back to like the Becca highlighting days. That is a really, really pretty formula that looks absolutely wet on the cheeks. If you're into these types of like baked, glowy, non-glittery highlights, you will love this. Did I need it? No. Did I buy it? Yes. Okay, last but not least, I bought a mascara and I completely forgot to use it in this video, which is such a bummer because it is freaking blue, but I got the YSL Lash Clash Mascara. It is their Extreme Volume Mascara. My sister has been telling me about this mascara for a while. She absolutely loves it. It makes her lashes look so incredible, but I have so many mascaras I love already. I didn't want to buy it until I saw it sitting there at Sephora in this freaking blue color. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try it. I'm just gonna try it in blue. I cannot wait to try this out. I will probably test this out on my stories or on TikTok one of these days. You'll probably see me use it sometime soon. But this packaging though, I love YSL. They're just so, ugh. Out of all the Lux brands, my favorite for makeup is Gucci and YSL. They're just so pretty. Their packaging is so good. Okay guys, so that's it. This is everything I bought at Sephora. I feel like I really liked everything. The only thing I was kind of disappointed in was this palette. But let me know if there's anything that you recently picked up at Sephora that you absolutely love that I need to get my hands on. Leave it in the comments below and I will definitely check it out. But that completes this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so, so, so much. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye.